I actually have a question for you, yeah. Yeah. Um, Mr. <laughs> Bonobos, because it's, this email question is good uh, because. So I've shopped at Bonobos multiple times, um, and there was a really juicy first customer order uh, discount. Yep. Um, and so We're I've used share our secret with the whole. I've time. used multiple emails <laughs> to get that. Yep. Right. Yep. Um, it comes to my same <laughs> apartment. Uh, so can you? You're tie, one of those guys. Thanks. Yeah. Can you tie me to? Can you tie me together? And also, so, if I was um, ordering to my office, or if I don't log in on my mobile phone, like, do you know? Do you know it's me? Yeah. So there's a dashboard sitting in Bonobos with your name at the top of the list. Somewhere. Sure. <laughs> How many email addresses has he used at that address? I wear a lot of pants. <laughs> Every day. The same. So we are not as it, I think a leading uh, company out there that does this is seamless. Have you ever tried to use like a, a promo code to get your New York delivery, New York City delivery, like lunch, and use the same credit card? They like block you or the same address. But Bonobos is not that advanced yet. Um, I think me, the marketing team, and the data science team are all very aware of this kind of flaw. Um, it's definitely like user driven, so you have to kind of want to game the system and enter different addresses and uh, uh, fill out the order as a new user and get that 20% off. And we don't, I don't have a great uh, sense right now as to what percent of our user base does this, but there is a project in our queue to like build a quick. Uh, categor categorical prediction, you know, uh, model in the data science team to just quickly see how many people are the same customer or not. Um, it's on, so it's on our, our it's on our radar, but we could easily dedupe based on credit card footprint or address. Um, if you do change your address or you log it on your phone, we do know you're the same user. Yeah. So we do have a sense of this global user ID. And we use uh, Segment pretty advanced. We, we are a pretty advanced user of Segment, so we give you anonymous IDs for every device you log into. And then once you do log on, we link back all of your anonymous browsing data to your logged in browsing mm -hmm. user ID. And we're able to create a really big picture of everything that you've done um, across devices, um, which has been really helpful to kind of see this, you know, the, the consumer behavior shift from like buying only online to how men are shopping on mobile or exploring you know, e data, uh, sorry, emails on mobile and are they purchasing or not. Like being able to watch that over time has been really interesting. And Angel, I'll, I'll give you a chance to throw that question right back at, right back <laughs> at Archimedes here because I'm sure you guys have similar situations. I mean, you've got a ton of different promo codes. Um, yeah, so right now, uh, you know, there's, there's also a question. Uh, so on our, on our Back end, when we look at uh, our, our customers, um, we do a matching based on address, email, uh, name. And so we, we can be pretty confident in our analytical databases and, and when we do reporting, the number of, of unique users. Um, mm -hmm. On our front end website, though, that information is not being used, right? So there will be multiple underlying accounts in the, in the tech system because it was built not to do all this, this matching um, in the way that the data scientists are doing, using it on the back end for reporting. Um, so there's currently a mismatch there, but it's something hmm. we're looking to fix. Awesome. Um, so I, I wanted to talk uh, a little bit about, uh, Scott, you, you pointed out early on how different your guys' data models are. Um, where you guys have four or five SKUs, um, you know, you guys are in, what, tens of thousands, millions? Tens of millions. Tens of millions, right. So, you know, what, what we, you know a really common pattern um, that probably at this point only applies uh, to you guys is, is uh, this idea of like product affinity analysis. What products are people buying together in the same order? What do users, you know, user who buys product A, you know, is more likely to buy product B? Um, with such a high number of SKUs though, I mean, is that even relevant or do you have any, any form of that that, that you do? Uh, yeah, so I just, for some perspective, I worked at a smaller pet care company before this in which 100 products drove 90% of our revenue and we looked really closely at product affinity analysis. At Jet, it's um, you know with ten with ten million products or more on the site selling, uh, the individual products uh, become just too much to look at, and we typically look at categories. I mean, we sell in twenty categories and three hundred, uh, sorry, three thousand smaller subcategories, and so you're really trying to look at you know the buyer behaviors between are they mixing in categories, are they buying beyond their category. Um, but where it becomes really important, though, is uh, when you look at product affinity is when we think about the shipments and where they're going. And so as we think about um, you know, trying to make sure that people are building smart carts and better baskets and where our retailers or where our own fulfillment centers should be 
um, should be stocking inventory. We're trying to create one shipment to the customer as many as, as uh, we're trying to get the, the order to the customer in as fewer boxes as possible. So we're often looking at does this product ship in this cluster with its other products, and uh, if so, let's locate that inventory in certain places. Uh, and it's especially also when you're looking at specific um, pricing decisions around uh, being competitive, right? You may lose money on certain consumable products all day, right? I don't know anyone who could probably ship uh, a case of water to your home for $3 uh, price point and make any money on that, but we know that's a, 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 good, a good customer interaction to have. And so you have to look at the broader picture in the portfolio of products when you're thinking about pricing and, and margin decisions on a product level. Great, um, uh, Andrews. Uh, I, I don't know. I don't know if any, anyone's or if everyone's used Bonobos here, but you guys have a really interesting business model where uh, you essentially have these guide shops, yep. right? Which are uh, which look like a, a more traditional, like you know, brick and mortar uh, store, but they're basically like places where you go try them on, uh, and then. You purchase online, right? Yep. So, uh, so you can purchase in the guide shop. You just can't walk away with the goods. I see. Okay. So, yeah. So, uh, really <laughs> curious to hear, like, you know, does that change the way that you you approach your analytics? Is it, you know, how does that differ from more traditional like e-commerce analytics? How do you factor in that sort of hybrid brick and mortar yeah. uh, and e-commerce? So. Uh, just as you were saying, we offer guide shops across the country. I think we're at twenty. How many? Twenty-three. 23? All right, we're in we just opened a new one in Madison Avenue, if you guys want to go buy it. your fact checker? Uh, <laughs> Jason Heath. <laughs> sure. <laughs> I think we need a website for that. Yeah. <laughs> so we have 23, and we're growing. We're dot com throughout his whole speech, and you can fact check him. <laughs> Just like Donald Trump. Um, so, um, so we have 23 guide shops, and the, the idea is that men and women like to try on things, clothes especially, before they make the purchase. So we allow you to go do that, and we have really knowledgeable guides that help you and make sure you're wearing pants correctly. A lot of, we found that a lot of men don't know how to wear pants or wear pants that are too big or too baggy. <laughs> and then also how to match your shirts and your ties and your suits all together. So um, it's a really awesome experience, but we're able to use... This, uh, this 360 view of the customer that I was talking about before, because all of our transactions in store and off store are tied together by the same user profile, unlike traditional retailers. So if you think about J. Crew, you go in there and they ask for your email address. That's usually a, how they tie their brick and mortar uh, transactions together with some of their online ones. But you can give different email addresses. You can kind of create a whole mess um, within their data set. Um, so we urge everyone to use the same customer profile, and we're able to really see the differences in customer value if you're acquired on the web, or if you're acquired through coming to a guide shop, or if you've come to a guide shop after going to the web, or only shop web. You can imagine there's different um, marketing dollars or ways you want to target different people based on what we predict they're going to spend if they come to the guide shop or web. And we're also to measure CLV, or customer lifetime value, in extremely long cohort views. So like, I know the cohort uh, from 2007 when we first started, I know how much each of those customers individually have contributed to our margin in grave detail because we can connect each and every one of their transactions. So that's the first part of how um, right. we're able to connect that, this data. Making that attribute to the user that follows them basically through their whole life cycle. Yep. yep. Awesome, guys. Well, that's actually all the uh, time we have, but a big thank you to the, uh, to the panelists today.